Now let's look at the second major cause of foodborne illness, poor personal hygiene. Again, a pretty simple concept, but it's very easy for employees to contaminate food. Four of the most commonly transmitted illnesses from employee to food include hepatitis A, salmonella typhi, sugar toxin producing E. coli, and shigella. Hepatitis A is a viral disease and the other three are bacterial. With all four of these illnesses, it's extremely important to practice good hygiene. Wash your hands, report illnesses, take daily baths, and wear clean, appropriate clothing every day. Hand washing is the most important preventative measure food service employees can practice to avoid food contamination. Though it may seem elementary, let's review the steps of proper hand washing. Apply soap. Vigorously scrub hands and arms for at least 20 seconds. The skin of your hands is able to attract, hold, and spread contaminants very easily. Clean under fingernails and between fingers. Rinse thoroughly under running water. Dry hands and arms with a single-use paper towel or warm air hand dryer. All of these steps are important. Now if you're washing your hands properly, are you washing them at the proper time? These are examples of the times you should be washing your hands to ensure the safety of the food you handle. After using the restroom, after touching your face or body, after sneezing, coughing, or using a tissue, after smoking, chewing tobacco, and chewing gum, after taking out the garbage, after handling dirty dishes, after handling raw foods, and before handling ready-to-eat foods, and in between glove use. After you properly wash your hands, it's important to know when you can handle foods using your bare hands. In Idaho, the food code requires that there be no bare hand contact with ready-to-eat foods. So how do you minimize bare hand contact? The most common way is to use disposable gloves, but you can also use tissue or utensils. There are some rules to remember when using gloves. Gloves must never be used in place of hand washing and should be changed regularly, especially when you switch a food preparation task or if they become soiled or torn. When changing gloves, it's also important to wash your hands in between taking the soiled glove off and putting the new glove on. The next component of good personal hygiene is the reporting of employee illnesses. Certain health problems must be reported to the person in charge so that the sick employees do not contaminate food. If an employee has a fever, diarrhea, vomiting, a sore throat with fever, or jaundice, then they are restricted from working in a food establishment. Restrict means that they are restricted from working with or around food or utensils. For example, if they desire to work, they can be a host, hostess, or a cashier. If a food worker has any of these symptoms and they work with a high-risk population, then they are excluded. Exclude means they cannot come to work at all. If an employee has been diagnosed with any of these four illnesses, hepatitis A, salmonella, shigella, and E. coli, then they are also excluded from working in the establishment, and the regulatory authority, usually the health district, must be notified. Remember, these are the four illnesses that are most likely to be spread from an employee to food. Medical clearance is usually required before an employee is allowed to return to work. Let's illustrate the point with a short story. Harold is a cook at the local diner. He wakes up with only 15 minutes to get ready for work. Harold does not have time to shower, so he puts on the clothes he was wearing the day before that have not been washed. His stomach feels a little funny, but he decides to go to work anyway because he needs the money. On the way to work, Harold blows a tire and he repairs it as quickly as possible. By the time he gets to work, he is so late that his boss tells him to get right to work making breakfast orders without washing his hands. After the breakfast rush, Harold takes out the garbage and then starts to get the salad bar ready for the lunch shift without washing his hands. Meanwhile, Harold's stomach is feeling worse. He tells the boss, but the boss dismisses it because two other employees have already called in sick and she can't afford to lose Harold too. Harold complies but rushes to the restroom to relieve himself. Harold washes his hands and realizes there are no paper towels, so he just wipes his hands on his apron and gets back to work. Is this any way to run a restaurant? Let's see if we can identify some of the things that Harold and his employer did wrong. He doesn't shower. He puts on dirty clothes. He feels sick but goes to work anyway. Fails to wash up before starting to cook. Takes out the garbage and again fails to wash up before preparing the salad bar. His boss dismisses his illness and tells him to keep working. He goes to the bathroom and washes his hands, finally, but wipes his hands on his dirty apron. Harold's story is a pretty extreme example, but does demonstrate the many ways food can become contaminated when employees and their employers don't follow basic hygiene rules.
Don't let this happen to you or the restaurant where you work. 